Welcome to 20 Minutes with Leon and every week our special guest. Brought to you by Buy360 Expo, this is the podcast that shines a light on the movers and shakers of the bio transition and their vision to lead us to a vibrant, sustainable, circular bio world. One where life goes on. For the first episode of our podcast series, we are delighted to receive a very special guest called Matthew Schmidt. Matthew is a writer, producer, and director of short and feature-length documentary films. Most recently, he produced Ice on Fire with Leonardo DiCaprio, an eye-opening documentary that focuses on many solutions which can help us save the world by slowing down our escalating environmental crisis. His film was part of the official selection at the Cannes Film Festival in 2019. As an advocate and ambassador of the biotransition, we are delighted to announce that Matthew is coming to next year's edition of Bio360 Expo in Nantes in February, and he's agreed to tell us today about his vision and to divulge his next big project. Matthew, welcome. Hi. Hi, Paul. (laughs) Hi there, welcome. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Beautiful fall day here in New York. Uh, nice and warm. And you've had your coffee? I had my my I had two co- coffees. <laughs> so so we're ready to go. Yeah. Ready to Matthew, go. Okay, perfect. Matthew, can I ask you? Film <clears throat> film is your thing. And and but but why is it that you think you are drawn to this medium in particular? Well, it has to do with communication, I think. Uh, it has to do with with bringing something that's important to you um, to to other people. And you can do that different ways. And I've done it in different ways. I've been a designer, uh, worked in marketing and advertising and, and creative director. I've done it as a teacher. Um, and I have chosen in, you know, 12 years ago that I felt the film medium is a medium to explore to, and I hate the word mass to, to masses because there really are no masses in the sense there's very particular people out there that are interested in hearing what you have to say. And it's a great way to get that out to the people that are interested, you know, rather than saying I'm making a film for the masses and we're not interested in, in making, you know, films like transformers you know, that's a different, that's a different metier, a different idea. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, okay, that I understand that. And if you would choose any words, any particular words that, that resonate with you, uh, that describe your work and, and how you go about it, are there any key words that you would kind of say sum it up for you? Yeah, we, we are very keen on being, understanding the meta problems and the meta solutions of an issue. Uh, It could be anything in agriculture, you know, where are we right now, presently in this world with agriculture, and what needs to happen, you know, what are the problems and what needs to happen to make agriculture, for instance, a a better, you know, play and what has happened, how was it co-opted into uh, industry that it's not supposed to be. And we discover all that through the people that are actually working on the ground. So we are already asking, so in our research and development, which is the pre-production of a film, is we're asking the farmers what their condition is, what they suffer from, what they love, um, and all these things. And we collect that and a picture emerges like an artistic picture emerges and that's the film we're trying to make. We're trying to freeze that idea into a, into a film, you know, and film is forever sort of, as they say. Okay. I get you. And, and uh, so, so leading on for that, maybe then uh, you you talked about agriculture and the soil and the ground. Uh, And if I'm right in thinking, there might be a new project in the pipeline at the moment, which might uh, relate to these subjects. Could you spill the beans for us a little bit? Yeah. So the, 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 the project that I'm very interested in and that emerged the same way is, is, is this, the, the, the film that is right now called The Biochar Effect, which basically is all about this phenomenon of rethinking industrial processes 
with this understanding of what biochar is or paralysis. So this, this transformation of a substance into a new substance, of a waste substance into a, uh, you know, I, I never really found the term, but I would say into a healing substance. You know, I mean, the biochar, the waste goes in, waste product goes in, and what comes out is this incredible, you know, uh, material we call biochar. And that transformation is something that is completely new. I mean, the technology is old and it's been done for, uh, what, centuries? I mean, the whole Amazonian people knew about it. I knew about it as a child. I've seen it small, you know, done on an agricultural um you know, on farms. But what really got me is that this could be the transformation from a bioeconomy, uh, from a geoeconomy, you know, based on fossil fuels into a bioeconomy if we understand that those waste products are full of carbon that then can be, and, and that's already, see, I'm, I'm becoming really complicated here. But, but, to me, it's 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 an incredible process that nobody understands. And then I went, that's where I met you at the Virginia conference, the biochar conference, and I realized how few people really could explain to me that larger transition. And so um so I was like, I have to make a film about this because again, this is this meta idea that people need to know. And the interesting thing for us as filmmakers is. I want people to understand this and I want people to get excited about this so they can do it where they are. They can actually implement this technology where they are and make a better a better world for themselves. That's that's really nicely put. Uh and I think the word healing is 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 an interesting word that that you that was was in what you said there and and the state of the planet today. Uh and biochar as a way of healing some of the ills that uh, we are suffering from that the planet is suffering and consequently we all are suffering from is is uh, is, a, is a key message that uh, so right now so important you know carbon draw down like draw it down lock it in don't dig it up um, store it forever you know draw down the legacy carbon you know really go and do it you know I, I'm like there's so much technology out there, but it's all in the infancy. You know, it's all in 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 a place where you can't really compete with with the opposite side that just blows you know gigatons and gigatons in the air every year. So mm -hmm. so the the conversation is kind of you know ended. And and what, what I realized with biochar, you can actually make a dent in the carbon drawdown, right? So you can make a dent with this. You you can draw down this carbon. You can store it forever in the ground. Because it binds, you know, then then the other thing is the circularity, circularity idea, which I, just blew me away. Because not only do we have a waste problem, right? We have a waste problem in agriculture. We have a waste problem in municipalities. We have a waste water problem. We have so many issues. And suddenly there's this technology that can solve it and not only take that waste sort of away, but also turn the waste into some valuable products that 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 can actually help agriculture, that can help water filtration that can help so so i call it the biochar halo effect you right know? It just it, it just blew me away when i looked at it as an adult um you know and the implication the economic implication and that's what i think is sexy today is yes there's beautiful things out there and but but people need to make a living we are living in an economy that that needs to be continued uh, we need to solve our problems, and we can't fund our problems through nonprofits. We we have or solutions. We have to go and make create an uh, economy that is you know in in itself circular and sustainable. And this technology, you know, and everything that you represent also in your your um, you know your conference is what does that. And that was to me worthy of film. Perfect. A, well, we're we're, deli we're delighted that you picked up on it, and, and that you want to make that a message. Fundamental to that, and underlying those points you just made, is the fact that biochar will enable us to sequester the addition, the ex excess uh, CO two that is in the atmosphere, 
uh, but it will also enable us to displace fossils in other ways in our day-to-day -day lives uh, by the substitution of in, in, the, in the different products and the different value uh, use, uses that we can use biochar for. As you mentioned, there's, there, there are many different ways of agriculture, but there are many other different ways that biochar can be used in the future. Yeah, I mean, the, the agriculture is known to a lot of people, and it's great. It ameliorates the soil. It has all these incredible benefits, and let's not get into that. But what I think is phenomenal is, and that's another thing I, I sort of learned as a byproduct, is that in the industrial production, let's say 80% of everything that we kind of see and understand, let's say um, concrete or asphalt, or building materials, except wood, is a filling material. So it's it's actually there's the, the the major component, you know, the thing that makes the concrete concrete, but then the rest is sand, stones, and it has to be in a certain condition. Now, to take this biochar and put it in there not only lightens the load, but supposedly because of its structure, it makes the concrete, it makes the asphalt, it makes the material more sturdy, more you know, in a, a lot of different things, and I don't want to get into. It. And that just was like, like, wow, that's the that's where the end product, right? What comes out after the, the the valuable product can go into industry and and change, and also help with resources. We are so, you know, our, our planet is being de resourced to, at a rate much much higher than we can ever. Um, you know, rebuilt. I mean, the sand, you know, the illegal sand harvesting, for instance, in India is out of, that's a, that's sort of a, a side product, you know, side story, but it's outrageous what people illegally do to get, you know, to make some money to get into this business. And concrete is a huge business. So that biochar now can, can, can actually be put into concrete um, and m put in all these materials. I think it's just an incredible, you know, it's an incredible, um, something that when i learned that i said i have to share this this has to be shared like now right and, you know, and, and, and the film. yeah well that's perfect and biochar does open many doors it's it's for sure and and you mentioned what i think is interesting what you mentioned is the the, the performance aspects of biochar and yeah. if we talk, if we talk, we were talking earlier about the fact that there are pioneers in this sector who've been working with biochar for, for, for many years. Maybe it's under the radar because they were real believers. And any of them who have actually commercially delivered biochar have always delivered it on the basis of superior performance. It hasn't been on any of the criteria that we use today, which are key criteria today, but it's because as a product, it has been able to outperform for less, for less cost than a fossil a fossil equivalent absolutely yes yeah okay so can I, can I ask you i think i think um you it, as part of your research for for the film the biochar effect you are planning to come to to nantes in february to the exhibition bio 360 expo yes yes so one of one of the places i'm going to go is is to come see you and your your conference that gets that gets so much praise well, super thank you very much Bill. i know it's Can like it's it's yeah it's going to be very interesting and, and what i love is that you are going beyond you know biochar that you're mm -hmm. looking at this larger picture of this bio transition um and i think that's really important and i think that helps that helps everybody who is so into one technology understand the bigger picture. And we have to communicate the bigger picture because that's what's inspiring, you know? Hey, exactly. I mean, there's, we, we hear in so many contexts the, the, the notion of silos and then cutting across the silos. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, there, well, there are so many synergies between the different aspects of the biotransition uh, and, and everybody's very committed to that, to that, to that, to that particular um, approach. But it's really important that we, we put these things together at the same place and these synergies can be discovered and and developed and, and it's a place for inspiration we hope people will go away with ideas having rubbed shoulders with someone they didn't know before and and, and found an, and, and and you know an idea has been generated from from that exchange yep that's so we're hoping the same will be for you what are your expectations and hope matthew well i'm like i said it, what's really a beautiful journey is that i'm going to like you mentioned, all the people that sort of developed and are a little further along, 
um, and see what they're doing visually. Like I was introduced to somebody who takes takes rice husks and 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 the, these mountains of rice husks are so phenomenally large that I think visually it's like if you take a drone or if you take a macro and you have a, a good you know sort of wide shot and you can see the mass of of problems that we have, which is something that you know rice husk. How can they, if you tell a child, oh, we have a problem with rice husks or or any kind of agricultural leftover, they go like, why don't you just compost it? Well, it's very difficult to compost. And again, you have the CO2 being emitted. And and now you're you're turning these these, for instance, rice husks into the spire char and 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 it has a very specific, you know, properties that are very good for water filtration. And and so to go to all these places and discover all the visual components that make a film, because it film is a visual story, right? right. So that's super, super exciting. And of course, you need to you need to meet the people who have the stories you can't, you know, so you have to go and, and have a lot of conversation. But the learning curve is like going to university, you know, like I'm going, I'm on a fast track to a master's in in biotransitioning, <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you, you, sit- you, you learn about municipalities and what their issues are. Yep. Uh, you learn about how, how stupid production sometimes is, you know, and how stupid money is. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable where I'm like every day I'm getting emails and, and people are telling me these incredible stories and things that they're doing. So, and, um, and, and coming to you, coming to Nantes is, is like, like meeting all these people probably in in nicely dressed because a lot of the people that I'm going to visit are in like work clothes, you know, <laughs> or sitting on a tractor or something. Well, so there'll be a bit of everything. Nice, there'll yeah. be a bit of everything. Yeah. There'll be a bit of everything in Nantes in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because it's about people who roll their sleeves up and, and get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing, one thing I would like to say is, you know, this, this film is, is really, from the industry, I, I like to, I don't like the word the industry because it has such negative connotations, but it's really from this community for the larger world. It's really, we're, we're just, we're just absorbing what we believe they really want to tell us. And there's so much enthusiasm and there's so much goodwill that's going in and hope that, that the municipalities and countries pick up on that and put the dollar, you know, put the money there rather than, than, you know, supplying bombs and, and, and arm, you know, weapons and, and to, to, you know, to war zones or, or, you know, we, we need to become a, a collaborative, peaceful world. And I think this in this industry, this, these, these group of people that are in this, field of you know of helping municipalities helping people restoring ecosystems um through their like silo you know use the word silo um you know that is the film that we want to make and it needs to be seen by a lot of people it's from the people for the people sort of almost like like uh you know like good old american patriotism um to to provide something that really gives enthusiasm because it is it is a technology that that scares people because it has the old fossil fuel mentality a little bit you know it's heat and Mm -hmm. what comes out is black (laughs) so but but it's another kind of black but it's another kind of black (laughs) exactly bio black exactly exactly well i could I, i i can also confirm that that the the ripples that we have received uh, coming through when people heard that you wanted to make this film have all been very positive and they're, and they're growing every day. So I think it's really important that, that someone like you takes this task on to shine a light on, on what has been somewhat in the shadows for, for, for quite a long time and needs to be brought out uh, and, 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 like you say, put to the broadest audience possible so that there's a groundswell of understanding and support for this kind of solution. And one of the IPCC six recognized uh, carbon uh, and, um, emit- negative emissions technologies. Yep. Um, but, but people people know, need to know what it is and there's something that's accessible is something that's available today something we can scale uh, and something which would be beneficial to to livelihoods of uh, of many people but also as well as to the to the livelihood of the planet so i think it's fantastic that you've decided yep. to become this and you're so enthusiastic about it as well yep so are you 
<laughs> so are you. You, yes, you know, indeed. it's funny because I, I said I came back and I said, you know, I've met a lot of great people, but there was this, 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 you know, I, I said this character, which is a German translation, and du sprichst ja ein bisschen Deutsch, ne? Jawohl. <laughs> you speak a little <laughs> German. So, and it's like this, he's this character, he's this incredibly interesting personality. And then when I realized what you're doing, it's so <laughs> like, wow, this, this guy is doing this big conference and he's so enthusiastic and he's, he tracks so young and, and, and <laughs> friendly and, and positive, you know, good for you. Thank you, Matthew. That's very nice. Of you. There's nice comments to hear. Thank you very much. We, <clears throat> we, we're very committed to what we do and uh, uh, we, we get on with it. Uh, so when people recognize that, you know, we're putting effort in and putting our heart and soul into something and we're conviction driven, uh, that's really great to hear that coming back from you. So thank you so much. Thank you, Matthew. It was a real pleasure to open the first season of our podcast with you. And we look forward to welcoming you to Nantes in February. And we'll certainly be following you in the adventure of the biochar effect. This was the first episode of our brand new podcast, 20 Minutes with Leon and Special Guest. And next week, Anders Mathieson, the president of the European Biogas Association, will be our new guest. If you missed the European Biogas Conference, which took place last week in Brussels, catch up on the key insights from this event with Leon and Anders. Stay tuned and see you next week.